Okay, we're ready. Let's go ahead and come back in here to our global variables. So let's go ahead and go online. There we go. We've sent in a true and we've got this thing in mode 2 now. And while this thing is running up, our mode count is back to 1 because it resets every time. But let me also see if I can reset that. And no, it looks like that did not reset my mode 2 count. So while that's running up, I'm just going to go back into here and look at my main program and see why that didn't seem to reset. So if count reset push button, then mode 2 count equals 0. And for whatever reason, I'm showing mode 2 count in here. And I'm guessing what that is, is I've got mode 2 count defined as a local variable. So that's not a problem. If I come in here, uh, whenever we're offline, I should be able to just remove that locally defined variable, and we should be good. And I think I've got probably the same thing. That's also still set up locally. We'll have to check. But for right now, I'm a little more interested in actual uh, system operation and seeing what's going on in here. So our mixer's running. We're in mode 3. And let's see how we're controlling things now. So uh, right now I see that we've got our pump off and our levels in good shape. It's coming down. So pretty soon we should see our pump go on once we get down to around 20 or 30. And our mixer's on because our temperature's at 350. And once we get a little bit lower, we should see our heater coming back on. And I don't remember what the set point was on that, but I know we've got a five second delay. And sure enough, I'm not seeing our heater coming on. So let's go back into the logic and see what's going on with that. I'm going to go straight to device control because I know that we've already had issues out of that. And it looks like we are handling our triggers and our resets just fine at this point. All right, let's go into our mode control. And let's take a look under operation and see what's going on here. I think heater start should be energized. And right here, we're moving uh, that one shot over to heater start, but that was just a one shot. And I'm guessing that maybe instead of using a one-shot, let's try taking those one-shots out and running this right off of the timer. I think that might do it for us. So let's go ahead and stop this, reset that, come up here and get rid of all of these one-shots, and then we're just going to go right off of these cues. So I'll just paste that in there, copy, paste that, copy, and yes, don't worry, I am going to move these things a little bit because I know they look terrible now. And you know I'm all about the housekeeping. All right, so let's go ahead and select all of that, and I think that's got it. And pull it over a little bit. Put ourselves actually before we put ourselves into run mode let's go back into program and see what's going on with our mode 2 count and our count reset PB that one is global but our mode 2 count is showing up as not being global so that's the problem we've got mode 2 count defined in here and that's going to cause a problem with Seconds, minutes, hours, pump, mixer, heater, valve, temperature, level, and let's see, I think I also need to get rid of those limits. Level in, temp in, um, how about pump start and pump stop? Yep, uh, all my starts and stops as well. System start and stop push buttons, and let's go ahead and get rid of those releases and triggers, temp our release, our alarms for sure, our alarm exists, mode, and all of those as well. So I think we want all of those as globally defined, and either I majorly just broke everything, or uh, I just uh, fixed some things. So let's find out. 
we've got something not defined at box uh, here on input 2. So here we're still looking at uh, PLC program and we just need to clean those out. So let's get rid of those PLC programs. And it looks like I also don't have the uh, temp limits actually defined. So maybe I'll go ahead and I could either put those back or I'll just put those into global. So that's high, high temp limit. And let's see, those are going to be reels. So let's just go ahead and copy a reel somewhere and create four more. That's going to be HH underscore temp underscore limit. And I'll double click that. And then we're going to have a same thing, but it's going to be a level. And one more. And that should be our low, low level. There we go. And I think I created one extra of those that I didn't need. So let's delete it and then go back into that because did I have four or did I have three? I've got four, it looks like. I've got a high, high temp. And it looks like the high, high temp is just referenced twice. So no big deal, as long as that's not a mistake. And I don't think it is. And so let's go ahead and uh, that's spelled out low, low, L-E-V-E-L. -E -E let's go ahead and just redefine that here and make that L-V-L. -E and we'll do the same thing here. So that L-E-V-E-L -E -E will be L-V-L. -E and let's look down here. Yeah, I've got a couple more. So same thing, L-V-L. -E -E and last one, last one. Got it. Okay, so now maybe I've got a program that'll work. Let's just try a project build. And what else did I break? Oh, okay, here we go. Well, I just um, left that called level. So let's make that LVL. And let's try that one more time. Project build. Type mismatch, can't convert a bool to a reel. And I guess I've got that set up as a bool. Well, that's a simple problem to fix. Let's come back in here and see where I set those limits up. And here we've got our three limits. And those all look like those are set up as reels. So why does it think that I've got that set up as a bool? Maybe I've got that set up locally here. Let's go ahead and delete that. And I bet that was it. Okay, now we're in good shape. Let's run this thing. We're online, we're running. Let's go back into our globals. System start push button. Let's send that value in. And all right, let's see if we can't get some positive uh, process control this time. Boy, it's taking forever, isn't it? I hope that this is the end. I'm, I'm not trying to keep going on this thing for the rest of my life. Uh, let's see. Temperature's already up to uh, 150 about. So yeah, we're already halfway to getting mixer. Temp ends looking fine. And let's check our count reset. We are in mode two, right? Actually, now how did we get up to mode four? That's interesting. I'm guessing that we must have retained mode or something like that, but we shouldn't be in mode four. Do we have any kind of alarms? Yes, we have a high, high level alarm and our level is only three. So we've got some strange things happening, very strange things happening. I'm going to go ahead and put the system off and then try and start it back up. So let's go ahead and bug out here. And now we're in off. And let's go ahead and come back online because we know we're going to initialize all of our alarms and everything when we do that. So now we're in mode zero. Whoops. Actually, I uh, hit the wrong button up there. I, I reset my count. 
But uh, on the bright side, my counter reset is working just fine, I think. Okay, so now we're in mode two. That's where we should be. And I think maybe now that I've redefined all of these things as globals, what happened is we actually retained some different values once I restarted this thing. Not 100% sure about that, but let's just fire up and see what happens now. So we've got our mixer running. We've got our heater running. Our temperature is eh, it's in a pretty good place. Our level's coming up. And we've already jumped up into mode four. And what's our alarm? We've got high, high level. And I don't know why we're getting high, high level unless we're just looking at the wrong number. So let's go into our alarms. And let's see what we're looking at for level. Well, we're looking for a high, high level. Our level, oh, well, look at that. We've got our high, high limit set at zero. <laughs> Okay, so the good news is our alarms are working. The bad news is I just didn't have all the values plugged in for those limits. Now that they're globals, they have to be defined. So let's go ahead and stop and come offline. And let's take a look at these limits. So a high, high temp, I will say, let's call that about 600. And a high, high level, we'll go ahead and call that 90 and a low, low level, we'll call that 10. Okay, one more time. Let's start this thing up, put it into run, and let's give it our system start push button. Good. Okay, so we should be past those alarms. We've already gone up into mode four, and I'm guessing that means we didn't initialize. So let's go ahead and reinitialize our system. I'm not sure why that would be necessary. That should be a given. Um, I think what actually happened is we're maybe retaining those level values. Um, let's see, where's our temperature actually? Temperature's 200, so that's looking good. Level's 28, 29, that's looking good. All right, so let's see if we can get this thing up there and going. Our temperature's almost to 300. We're about to get mixer. Once we get mixer, 30 seconds, we should go into mode three, not mode four. We're not looking for that to happen anymore. Our temperature is in a good place. Our level's in a good place. We've got pump, mixer, and heater all on. And heater just went off. So good, we're getting a good control on heat so far, as long as we don't fall through the floor again. And now that our mixer's been running about uh, getting close to 30 seconds, we should see our mode three, and there it is. Okay, and we've made it here before. Now the question is, can we control process? So our level is falling, and our temperature is falling. The question is, will they keep falling too low, or will they start coming back up to where they belong? And that's what we're gonna have to wait and see, so. We're at 57 level, we're at about, oh, our, our temperature's actually going up now. Good, so our heater came on. That means we've got positive temperature control. And let's see how long that heater stays on. Heater just went off. Guess what, guys? We've got positive process control on our heat. Now, it's all about the level. Can we get the level to work? Is it working already? We'll find out here shortly. Um, while that's happening, you can see my mode two count is up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just toggle that switch and make sure, look at that, I reset my mode two. Good, I like that. And we've got, you see here, we've got nine on our seconds. So that tells us that our hour meter counting how much time we spend in mode four is actually working. That's a good thing, but guess what? Looking at our level, we're already down to 30. And how's our pump? Our pump is off. And I don't remember what the set point that I had on that tank was. I should have looked by now. I can't remember if it was 20 or 30, but I can tell you now it wasn't 30. Either it was 20 or I still don't have good process control on my pump. 
So we're about to find out here in about seven seconds. Now we're crossing the threshold of 20. We're now below. And within five seconds, we better see that pump come on. So what do you say, guy? Are you going to turn on for me or am I going to have to go through this? Oh, did you see it? Did you see it? The pump came on. The pump came on. Yes, indeed. All right. Guess what, guys? We've got process control. This thing is running. We've built a machine finally. And look at that. Okay, cool. So I like where we're at. Um, I'm actually, rather than going and thoroughly testing out the hour meter and everything, I think you've already seen enough debugging. And I'm going to give you this program not completely thoroughly shaken out and debugged, but basically working. And if you want to take it and thoroughly test it and run with it and build on it and experiment, by all means, I encourage you to do so. It's going to help. But otherwise, I'm not going to make you sit through a whole bunch of that because, you know, I think you've already, you know, got way more than you expected out of all of this uh, development and emulation towards the end of this section. So I'm going to let you off the hook here. I'm going to call that a wrap. And we're going to leave this section. <laughs> You're probably grateful to hear that. We're going to come back in the next and we're going to start looking at a really cool new technology. But uh, until then, thanks for sticking with me all this time. And, you know, that's just a taste. That is the good, the bad, the ugly of real world development. So you look at somebody who's been writing programs for years and, you know, creates these systems, you know, left and right. And, you know, you think, oh, that person, you know, just, you know, they eat, breathe, sleep and drink this stuff. They, you know, everything they write works. Guess what? This is what real programming looks like. So if you still struggle to make your stuff work, if you still stare at it and can't figure out what it's doing sometimes or why, um, guess what? That's what programmers do every single day. Um, you're not going to meet a programmer who says, yeah, everything I write works from the start. No, you know, a lot of times we get stuck. A lot of times we have tons and tons of bugs, but you know, here's what does the trick. What matters is when you get done, is the system working? Because all anybody is ever going to see talking about a client is the program you give them once you've already tested it, once you've already shaken all the bugs out, and once it already works. And then they look and they say, wow, thanks, you know, you did it again. Um, what makes you a good programmer isn't your ability to write it all and get it correct the first time. What makes you a good programmer is your thoroughness at shaking the project down and testing it and testing it and making sure you've thought of everything and double checking that it all works before you hand it to anybody. So that's it. We're out. I'll see you in the next section. Cheers.